generating, and that was we spent we spent a billion pound on players over mm -hmm. that century. We spent more than anyone in Europe. But I believe, it, you know, I, I'm not thrilled where we are. Right? I, I don't. Doesn't sit easy. I worry. Right? We've got to get this sorted for the future. But what's happened is we fucking burned through cash on. You can't go and see. I, you can't go to our training ground and say, by the way, show me where that billion pound is in, because it. Yeah, you know, I don't think we've done well with the money we've spent historically. Yeah. But I'm not defend. I'm not here to defend Joel or Cheryl. He must speak for himself, right? I wanted to talk to you. You've taken the time and energy to come here to make your views known. I respect that. Yeah. This is Manchester United CEO Richard Arnold. They're saying Manchester United have burned through cash. We've wasted money. This is Man United CEO speaking to fans directly. The community, the sort of communication we wanted. If you don't know what happened, uh, Man United fans planned a peaceful protest outside Richard Arnold's house this weekend. He got wind of it somehow. That I don't know. That I don't understand really. But instead of sending bodyguards down to the pub, he went down to the pub himself to meet United fans. And if you can't see a positive aspect of that in itself alone, then I think you're looking at it completely wrong. What I want to do in this video is run through the comments from Richard Arnold. Everything that he said in that video, and we'll, we'll, we'll pick that apart and I will do. So make sure you stick around for that. But I also want to speak about the reaction to this video because, as I said, in isolation, Man United CEO Richard Arnold deciding to go down to speak to fans, to sit there and to talk to fans, I think is a very positive thing. I can see the positivity in that. And I also do agree with people and the idea that, look, whoever filmed it, filmed it probably for the right reasons. But I think it's a little bit sh short-sighted because we finally got our CEO to sit there and talk to fans. But it's been filmed covertly. And now that will mean that com the conversations and communications in that sense might be a little bit more difficult because of it. But I do think overall it's a positive thing that this has happened. I do think, what I, I'll be honest, I think he came across okay in that interview. But I'm not sitting here like, are people are, ah, oh, sad, fucking accepting that PR guff X, Y, Z. I agree with Ian. Ian, Ian who was there, look, he, he said that he felt that he was honest and open. That's down to your interpretation. You know, we didn't agree on some things, obviously, but he came through and that's the start. That's what I mean. This is the start. I think people want and expect this to go from one to 100. They want our CEO to come down there to slam the Glazers, to say the Glazers are shit, that they all need to be... Get, that, that won't happen. But in terms of the progression of the conversation, yeah, it's slow. We know it's slow. It's not as fast as we will. We all want this to happen. We all want the Glazers out. But from when the protest started, this, I think, is another step in the right direction. More momentum. Now, let's run through and let's listen to everything that Richard Arnold had to say inside this interview. And let me give my opinions on it as and when. So this is the first part, which you've just heard. Was, we, spent, we spent a billion pound on players over mm -hmm. the last century. We spent more than anyone in Europe. But I believe... It, you know, I, I'm not thrilled where we are, right? I, I don't, it doesn't sit easy. I worry, right, we've got to get this sorted for the future. But what's happened is we fucking burned through cash on, you can't go and see, I, you can't go to our training ground and say, by the way, show me where that billion pound is in. Because it, you know, it, I don't think we've done well with the money we've spent historically. Yeah. But and that's an understatement of the century, how badly Manchester United have done with the money that we spent. We have fucking burned through cash. And again, if you're looking at positive, no, it's, no look, I, I'm known as a, a person who will take a positive angle, and I don't do that from a naive perspective. But you think, do you think the Glazers are going to be happy this video exists? Do you think the Glazers are going to be happy that that conversation happened? No, they will not. So you can try and just slam him as a Glazer stooge and X, Y, Z, and we don't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. Cool, fair enough. But they will not be happy this exists. And this only gives more fuel to the protest, more momentum behind it. Because now we've got our CEO on camera here saying, the camera wasn't needed because he was, we still would have said it, but we've wasted money. We've wait, burned through cash. And this is where he goes, goes on to start talking about um, the finances this summer. The idea there that, that there's not all of a sudden 250 million to invest in a training ground. We know that. We know that investors are needed. But that is why these protests really are having a an impact which is definitely hitting Manchester United you can tell that from this interview I'm not here to defend Joel or Cheryl he must speak for himself right I wanted to talk to you you've taken the time and energy to come here to make your views known I respect that um, and that we 
blown through an enormous amount of money. For this summer, the money that the manager and the, uh, the director of football wants is there, right? For the future. Right. So he's saying there, for De Jong, for Ten Hag, for everything that we need this summer, the, the finances are there. Now, proof is in the pudding. Richard, why are we sitting here waiting and delaying on a move for Frankie De Jong? Over 15 million euros if the money's there. Proof is in the pudding. Let's, let's fucking see it. Let's see United act like... I mean, we haven't acted like we should have already this summer. So, from what we've seen, the money might be there, but the money is not enough for what is required. When he goes on to speak about this next part here, this is about the wider future of the club, and this is obviously where the Glazers need to... I need to get the fuck out of the club for this. For us to succeed as a... In the, well, anyway. Listen to what else Rich has. In new stadium and that sort of stuff, to do a latest and greatest £250 million training ground, okay, we've got to do something. We've got to get investors in. And again, you know, uh, I need that to do what I want for the club. Right? I've, got to, I've got to have more cash than we have now. Yeah, yeah. Because... And again, do you think the Glazers will be happy at hearing their CEO say that? No, they will not. This will help us. But what he's saying there, it's obvious that these protests that are going on and i've congratulated the 1958 i think what they've done is change the narrative of the protest instead of having one big one every six 12 months or whatever it is it's constant constant noise steps momentum and it might not be happening as quickly as you want it to it might not be as i don't know it just might not be happening how you want it to but i think the way that the, the protests have been changed and you can hear it there you can hear it in his voice the, clearly these protests we need investors he says and what's going on? Obviously, the boycott that's trying to happen online. The any, any, all the protests that happened at Norwich. Uh, was it Burnley? I can't remember the name. Of the three games at Chelsea. They're all having an impact, and you can tell that really by listening to what Richard Arnold has to say here. New stadium, no stadium, and no club in the world has the money to do a new stadium without getting it from someone. They don't. No one generates that. You either borrow it or someone invests it, right? And well, so Spurs on the mortgage, eight hundred million. Spurs got a billion pound mortgage, yeah. yeah. Right, so. The money's got to come from somewhere, and, and you may not like our current owners, okay? I can't help that. The, but if you want someone else to come in, they have to look and say, okay, the fans love the club, they love the team, it's positive. Because the other bit is, I look, look at that, last year was a fucking nightmare, right? It was a nightmare. Last year was a fucking nightmare. Uh, I was hating every game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things. One, the protests. Okay, protest. What what's what's your reaction to this to this interview? What what is the main overarching thing that you're taking away from it? Are you taking away the fact that it's as I said, our CEO sitting down and talking with fans has to be considered a good thing? Are you going to be taking a negative stance that um, uh, he's just a Glazer stooge and what he's saying is just pure PR guff? Uh, this is Jerry. Jerry was um, obviously he's been part of everything that's gone on with 1958 has been quite a significant part of it. Um, I, you can go and read the thread if you want on Twitter. But the general consensus is, from him anyway, and this is where I, could, I, have, to, I have to agree to semi-disagree. He's talking about the, the, the self-interest of, of um, Richard Arnold in doing this interview. And I say, look, right, let's just rewind. What happened when protests happened outside Ed Woodward's house? The son knew about it before the protests even fucking happened, by the way. He wasn't there. Nobody was there. It was labelled as this threatening and violent protest where it was, a, it was a few United lads turned up to protest outside the house of our CEO because of the way that he had run the club into the ground. And this time around, we've got our CEO... Well, no, well not CEO. He's the first CEO. But our chief there and Richard Arnold coming and meeting the fans themselves, sitting down, having a drink with them and discussing the convers discussing everything. That is a that is a significant switch and is a significant step in the right direction. It's not as fast as we want it to be, I know that. But ultimately, I think what will prove everything, right or wrong, is what happens this summer. Richard Arnold there on camera has said the money is there. The money is there for Manchester United this summer, right? But let's see it. 
why are we now sitting here having this conversation about the De Jong, about the 15 million, about what's going on with Yuri and Timber? I'll speak about that tomorrow in a separate video. What's going on with the defensive midfield? What's going on with the new attacker but didn't have enough money for Darwin Nunes? What is this budget? Where is this budget? Let's, let's see something. Let's put, put the money on the fucking table, United. We have to see that in the short term. As I said, I can't help but be a little bit saddened is the wrong word. But in Richard Arnold, I, th I think he comes across quite well in that interview. Say what you want. I think he comes across quite... I feel... not. Uh, he's not going to be telling the whole truth, will he? Is he? He absolutely isn't. But feels like he gives a fuck. Feels like he certainly wants to make sure that what the work that he does is different entirely from what Ed Woodward did before him. And I also can't help but feel the fact that this was secretly filmed hasn't helped us as fans in getting these conversations, in starting this communication. I mean, you can take what you want from it. You really, really can take what you want from it. And I can see, I can see all sides. I can see every angle. And look, we've obviously known everything that's gone on here with the protests. And it was, they've made an impact. This has made an impact. And if you don't think it's made an impact, I think you're completely wrong. The fact that Richard Arnold is coming out and speaking outside his house, it shows that it's making an impact. The fact that he's talking about that we need investors and they can't get investors at the moment, it goes to show it's making an impact. Everything is making an impact, bit by bit by bit, stage by stage by stage. It's not happening as quickly as anybody wants it to, and it won't. When you're trying to get rid of an o a set of owners who don't want to leave the club, it's going to take a long time. I just wanted to say a few words on this interview, on the video that's come out from it, and the different types of reactions that there's been. You can let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Ultimately, I think it's a positive thing that United fans have been able to get this communication. I'd like to see what happens as a consequence, but if ultimately United fans this summer, from a short-term perspective, Richard, man, if the money's there, start putting it on the table. You're the link between John Murto and the Glazers. It goes through you. Make it fucking happen then. Then we can talk about what comes next. Or maybe we do it all at the same time. You can let me know what you think about the whole interview in the comments below, as I'm sure you will.